Yehovah Eloheinu Svaot, Kadosh, 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 please fill me and lead me with the Ruach HaKodesh, that I may speak your written words with boldness to those who listen. I ask all these things in Yeshua HaMashiach's name. Amen. We'll start with the Shema. Listen and obey. Children of Yehovah, pay careful attention and respond. Yehovah is our power and authority. Yehovah works in unity with himself, and you shall act upon your love. To Yehovah with your power and authority, with your thoughts and mind, with your entire body, and with all the muchness that you have. Yod, hey, vav, hey. Hand, behold, nail, behold. Joshua, chapter 22. Then Yehoshua called the Ruvini, the Gadi, and the half-tribe of Manasheh, and said to them, you have done everything Moshe, the servant of Yehovah, ordered you to do, and heeded what I said and all the orders I gave you. All this time you have not abandoned your kinsmen, but have obeyed your commission, as Yehovah your God ordered. Now Yehovah your God has given you rest to your kinsmen, as he told them he would. So you too return to your tents in the land which is your possession, which Moshe, the servant of Yehovah, gave you beyond the Yarden. Only take great care to obey the mitzvot, the Torah, which Moshe, the servant of Yehovah, gave you, to love Yehovah your God and follow him in all his ways, observe his mitzvot, cling to him, and serve him with all your heart and being. Then Yehoshua blessed them and sent them away. And they went to their tents, to the half-tribe of Manasheh. Moshe, gave, Moshe had given an inheritance to Bashan, but to the other half, Yehoshua gave one among their kinsmen on the west side of the Yarden. When Yehoshua went, sent them away to their tents, he blessed them, saying, Return with great riches to your tents, with very much livestock, with silver, gold, bronze, iron, and with great quantities of clothing. Share the spoil of your enemies with your kinsmen. So the descendants of Reuben, the descendants of Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh returned. They left the people of Israel in Shiloh, in the land of the Canaan, to go to the land of Gilad, to the land they were to possess, and which they already did possess, according to the order of Yehovah through Moshe. When the descendants of Reuben, the descendants of Gad, and the half-tribe arrived in the area of the land of the Canaan near the Yarden, they built an altar there by the Yarden, a large, impressive altar. The people of Israel heard of it and said, Look! The descendants of Reuben, the descendants of Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh have built an altar by the frontier of the land of Canaan, in the area by the Yarden, on the side that belongs to the people of Israel. When the people of Israel heard of it, the entire community of Israel gathered together in Shiloh to wage war against them. The people of Israel sent Pincus, the son of Eleazar the Kohen, into the land of Gilad, to the descendants of Reuben, the descendants of Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. With him were ten leaders, one leader of an ancestral clan for each tribe of Israel. Each one, had, each one was a head of, an, of his ancestral clan among the thousands of Israel. They came to the descendants of Reuben, the descendants of Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh, in the land of Gilad, and spoke with them, they said. Here is what the whole community of Yehovah is saying. What is this treachery that you have committed against the God of Israel, turning away today from following Yehovah? and that you have built yourselves an altar, thus rebelling today against Yehovah. Is the guilt we incurred at poor not enough for us? We haven't cleansed ourselves from it to this day, even though the plague came on the whole community of Yehovah. In the, is this why you have to turn away today from following Yehovah? If you rebel against Yehovah today, he will be angry tomorrow with the whole community of Israel. If the land... You have taken possession of as unclean, then cross back over into the land which belongs to Yehovah, where the tabernacle of Yehovah is located, and take possession among us. But don't rebel against Yehovah, and don't rebel against us. But build yourselves an altar other than the altar of Yehovah our God. Didn't Achan, the son of Zerach, commit a sin in regard to things set aside for destruction, and God's anger fell on the whole community of Israel? He was not the only one who died for his crime. Then the descendants of Reuben, the descendants of Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh answered the leaders of the thousands of Israel. The mighty one God is Yehovah. He knows, and Israel will know, if we acted in rebellion or treachery against Yehovah, don't vindicate us today. 
We haven't built an altar in order to turn away from following Yehovah or to offer it on it burnt offerings, grain offerings, or sacrifice of peace offerings if we let Yehovah himself require it to atone for it. Rather, we did this out of anxiety because we thought sometime in the future your descendants might say to our descendants, you don't have anything to do with Yehovah, the God of Israel, because Yehovah made the yard and the border between us and you. So your descendants of Reuben and Gad have no share in Yehovah. In this way, your descendants could make our descendants stop fearing Yehovah. So we said, let us, ma- let us now make preparations and build ourselves an altar, not for burnt offerings or sacrifices, but as a witness between us and you and between your, our generation who will come after us so that we may perform the service for Yehovah in his presence with our burnt offerings, sacrifices, and peace offerings, so that your descendants will not say to our descendants at some future time, you have no share in Yehovah. For this reason we say, when they accuse us or future generations in this way, we will say, look, here is a replica of the altar of Yehovah which our ancestors made, not for burnt offerings or sacrifices, but as a witness between us and you. Far be it from us that we should rebel against Yehovah and turn away from following Yehovah by building an altar for burnt offerings, grain offerings, and sacrifices other than the altar of Yehovah our God, which stands in front of his tabernacle. When Pincus, Kohen, the leaders of the community, the heads of the thousands of Israel who were with him, heard what the descendants of Reuben, the descendants of Gad, and the descendants of Manasseh said, it satisfied them. Pincus, the son of Eleazar the Kohen, said, The descendants of Reuben, the descendants of Gad, and the descendants of Manasseh. Today we know that Yehovah is here with us, because you have not committed this treasonous act against Yehovah. Now you have saved the people of Israel from the anger of Yehovah. So Pincus, the son of Eleazar the Kohen, and the leaders returned from the descendants of Reuben and Gad, the land of Gilad, the land of the Canaanite, the people of Israel, bringing word back to them. What they said satisfied the people of Israel. The people of Israel blessed God and said no more about going to wage war against the descendants of Reuben and Gad and destroying the land where they lived. The descendants of Reuben and Gad called the altar Eid, a witness between us and that Yehovah is God. How can we learn to love our Creator after reading this interesting chapter? 22 of Joshua. We can do everything Yehovah orders found in his written word. We can obey the commission of Yehovah found in his written word. Trust that rest comes from Yehovah. Go where Yehovah leads you. Obey the mitzvot and the Torah. Love Yehovah, your Elohim. Follow all his ways. Observe his mitzvot. Cling to him and serve him with all of your heart and being. Trust that blessings come from Yehovah. Make something to help you remember that Yehovah is Elohim and his word stands forever. Be slow to anger. Have pure motives. Be able to explain your actions to others. Fix your eyes on Yehovah. Follow Yehovah wholeheartedly. Act on trust done in Yehovah. Fear Yehovah and obey his commands. Serve Yehovah. Aim to be a witness between man that Yehovah is God. How can we love others as Yeshua loves us? We can encourage others to love Yehovah with all of your heart and being. Bear one another's burdens. We can fear Yehovah, obey his commands, love Yehovah wholeheartedly. Produce spiritual fruit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, humility, self-control. End with the Arianic blessing using the name. Yehovah will kneel before you presenting gifts. He will guard you with the hedge of protection. Yehovah will illuminate the wholeness of his being towards you, bringing order. And he will provide you with love, sustenance, and friendship. Yehovah will lift up the wholeness of his being and look upon you and will set in place all you need to be whole and complete.